Good morning, everybody. Today, I invite you to take a virtual walk with me through the city. And I want you to imagine how it may look in 25 or even 100 years from now. Odds are most of you are urban dwellers, and your children are urban dwellers, your grandchildren are urban dwellers. Since the turn of the 20th century, Americans have made a steady move from the farms to the city. And in 1900, 95% of Americans lived in rural areas. Today, 81% of our fellow countrymen live in metropolitan areas. And this is very, very a high percentage in the world. And if you drive downtown and notice all of the towering, new, shiny buildings around, that despite this economic progress, too many of us all around us are living without enough nutritious food to eat. In the worst of circumstances are those who don't even have enough money to pay for the poor food that is available to us. Is this the kind of life and the environment we are shaping for the future? Will we allow social inequality, poverty, blight, crime, and, 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 and pollution continue to beset our cities both here and abroad? How will we feed, clothe, and shelter, and educate these swelling urban populations? To answer these ur urgent questions, we have to start with just three. So here are my three questions for you. Well, number one, who grows your food? Why should that be important to you? And can growing food grow amazing cities? Can we all agree that some of the fundamentals of living a good life are health, security, and community? Quality food is the most important part of being healthy. Yet, food insecurity is growing uh, throughout our communities, and the lack of access to healthy food is a major concern for everybody, or should be a major concern for everybody in our country. More than five million households live in areas that have little or no access to healthy fruits and vegetables. In areas where people don't have access to a vehicle, the diet-related diseases are even higher. Access to food and food choices are a huge part of this equation. Consumption of fast food is killing us. We're eating 31% more packaged and processed foods than fresh fruits and vegetables. So nice to see them serving y'all fruit this morning. Hmm? Uh, we're consuming more, we are consuming more packaged foods than most people in any other country in the world. Think about this now. You and I live in the richest country in the history of the world. Let me repeat that. We live in the richest country in the entire history of the world. However, we're spending more, considerably more, on health care than any other country. Too many of our children are unhealthy. Our elderly are sicker for longer periods of time. We are paying too much for the nutrition-depleted foods we are consuming. We have the power to change these realities. I do have some ideas about how to solve these problems, but first I want to go back to my initial questions. Who grows your food? For most of human history, food was grown within walking distance of where it was produced. Uh, uh, it was produced within walking distance of where it was consumed. And it was a way of life in which people maintained their connection to the earth, connection to the soil. Urbanization and the industrialization of the food production has made this a distant memory. We don't do that anymore. Today, most of our food is shipped, an average of uh, 15 to 22,000 miles. It's produced from hybrid and GMO-modified seeds, sprayed with chemicals, and shipped from all over the world. And as I said, it travels about 1,500 to 2,000 miles before it gets to your table. And it's been out of the ground or off the bush, the tree, for quite a bit of time before it gets to your table. So this means that knowing who grows your food is out of the question. But there is a way to bring city dwellers closer to their farmers and provide an abundance of natural, nutritious food, and that is through urban agriculture. It is expected that 70% of the world's population will be urban by the year 2050. Hmm? The urbanization of the world makes bringing agriculture to our cities not just a good idea, but absolutely essential. Part of the solution to rebuilding our health, our community, and our cities is in this bucket. This is soil derived from organic compost. That's right, soil. I believe 
The solution is in the soil. All of us need to understand this simple yet profound statement. Nothing, absolutely nothing on this planet uh, happens that does not originate from, from the earth. And in this digital age we live, we forget this fact. Every part in our computers and smartphones derives from the earth, whether it's the plastic covers that come from the oil or the rare earth metals, many that come from Africa, that make up the motherboards in our computers. Hmm? Our lives begin and end with the soil. And consider this, there is no culture without agriculture. Hmm? Agriculture, <laughs> agriculture is the foundation of it all. It's what led to our contemporary human societies. Civilization began when humans settled in one place and started growing crops. We cannot live without a system that grows our food. We cannot flourish without healthy food. Think about it. We've become so accustomed to easily accessible food, we don't even consider how it's grown, who grows it, and what that means for our future. Hmm? Many of us, however, are changing this paradigm, and it has to do with this, urban agriculture. A local food system is an integrated process that brings healthy food to everyone in our community and spurs economic growth. Urban agriculture is a social design centered on natural food production in the city. In the city of the future, we will no longer jump in our cars, burn fossil fuels to go and buy food grown with mechanical arms on farms that are far away. In this social design, we will walk to a farm or garden in our neighborhoods to get fresh, nutritious food harvested by urban growers that we know personally. We will no longer pass empty lots and blighted properties that are havens for crime. We will eat, work, and play close to home in safe, beautiful spaces. Urban agriculture empowers people with food, self-sufficiency, maintains stewardship over our environment, and builds a sense of community. Thanks to the strong and independent actions of city farmers and gardeners across the country, this concept is gaining prominence in the minds of planners, both planners and, and developers. Our new farmers, our urban farmers, are helping to, uh, to, to connect the dots, bringing together the best of what we have learned from rural and urban living ecology, technology, sociology, and economics. All of these sciences and more coalesce to create a new paradigm that is the city of the future. It is a place where people are truly living well. In the city of the future, wholesome food will be a right for all and not just a privilege for a few. I want to repeat that. Quality food is a right that we should have as human beings and it shouldn't be dependent upon how much you got in your pocket. Hmm? These science, th th this is where I come in. I am an urban agriculturalist. Through this work, I'm helping to, to rebuild our health and our community in our city. I came to the work of agriculture after graduating from Harvard College in a, with a degree in political science. Now, I'm an urban boy, okay? I grew up in the city. I was still in search of a practical skill. They don't teach you up there at the Ivy League how to earn a living, just how to think. You know? <laughs> One day, God spoke to me and said, Learn everything you can about food from the seed to the table. So I went and earned a master's degree at UMass uh, in plant and soil science. And that began a 40-year-plus odyssey that has taken me around the world. I have worked now in 35, 36 countries doing the work of agriculture and mastering my craft. Travel has enabled me to, to observe local food economies in the countries I've worked and I now led my experience to the urban areas where uh, good health and nutrition are lacking. Now this is where you and you and you come in. And here are our second and third questions. Why should this be important to you? And can growing food grow amazing cities? Just as farming was the catalyst for the growth of human society, urban farms are catalysts for vibrance, cohesive communities, and engines for our economy. Local food production provides jobs and housing opportunities, business opportunities, uh, it can be built around housing, circulates dollars locally, encourages education, improves property values, and most importantly, is that it creates neighborhoods which are attractive to people of all incomes and ethnicities. The Interner uh, Environmental Law Clinic published a report in 2011 
This report documented urban agriculture development in pol and policy in about 16 major cities across the country, uh, including Atlanta. This movement is growing, and I want you to understand the value of urban agriculture in addressing many social concerns. Let me tell you the story of Jimmy. Jimmy is one of our neighbors who struggle in our current education system. He was not prepared to function in this high-tech world. Jimmy is typical of a good person whose life could easily slide into welfare, poverty, and crime. Yet, he found, they found salvation in the soil. He started to work at our urban farm in downtown Atlanta. He learned viable agricultural skills and found a new value in himself that lifted his self-esteem. Today, Jimmy has a GED, an apartment, and a savings account. Urban agriculture created a job for Jimmy and offered him so much more. One of the many transformative qualities of urban agriculture is that it presents opportunities for everyone. Through the simplicity of natural food production, farmers cultivate communities that are caring, healthy, and self-sufficient. The good news is this can happen in any city. Urban agriculture topples the myth that food production has to occur in wide open spaces on large tracts of land. All across the nation, farmers in metro areas are growing food, uh, food and crops on vacant lots, in abandoned fields, in greenhouses, on balconies, backyards, front yards, patios, back next to schools, in prison yards, in nursing homes, and in countless other creative and engaging places. Within our city, there are thousands, perhaps millions, of acres just lying dormant. We have enough land in metropolitan Atlanta to provide all the fruits and vegetables to feed everybody. These are acres that are waiting to be cultivated, acres waiting to produce an abundance of naturally grown fresh vegetables, fruits, and herbs, acres waiting for an opportunity to create jobs, acres waiting to provide beautiful, safe spaces for people and healthy ecosystems. These are acres all that are waiting to be classroom for our children, acres waiting to provide training grounds for our agricultural entrepreneurs. And these are acres waiting to create the city of the future. This work of urban agriculture educates, employs, empowers, and inspires new generations of Americans. And all of, all of it, all of it can be done with just a hoe, a rake, and a shovel. Natural urban farmers employ techniques that, that, that emulate nature. And this is, this is the most important part. We don't try to conquer nature. We want to emulate nature. Uh, GMOs means what you've heard. Is it's uh, genetically modified organisms, but it really is God move over. The scientists think they're smarter than God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These techniques go beyond organic and grow quality food, <coughs> excuse, food while protecting natural resources. We rely on compost, crop diversity, and natural cycles to replenish the soil and combat pests. By observing nature's rules, natural farms skip the entire menu of detrimental petrochemicals utilized by industrial agriculture. Chemical-based growth stimulants do produce large quantities of food, but at the expense of the vitamins, minerals, and trace elements that create flavor and nutrition. Teaching people how to grow food is essential. A new generation of small farmers is emerging with technical and entrepreneurial skills to fill the demand for produce in the local food economy. By digging their hands in the soil, people learn how to grow food, then return to their communities and start their own agribusinesses. As in the past, we must place an emphasis on providing agricultural education in our communities. It used to be that way. Home ec. 4-H, all of the education programs that we had in our schools. And that's one of the greatest social impacts of urban farming, preparing us for a sustainable future. Through summer camps and farm to school programs, children learn the value of knowing where their food comes from, what it looks like in a natural, unprocessed state, and what it takes to get food to the table. They leave armed with knowledge to make better food choices and to reduce childhood obesity and other illness and become better stewards of the earth. We had a 10-year-old come to our camp in the summer of 2012. She had high blood pressure, a 10-year-old now, had high blood pressure and was pre-diabetic. What she learned at the camp, she took home and shared with her family. By the end of the summer, her blood pressure and blood sugar numbers were down considerably. Maybe the solution to universal health care 
begins in our soil. Growing food on vacant lots in our cities is the place where this could begin. Now, there's something very spiritual and magical about putting your hands in the soil, in the dirt. I watch every day how working in the soil and just being around the activities of food production impacts people. The energy that is produced transfers to everything else that's being done. People begin to nourish the foundation, the soil of their lives by planting seeds, nurturing, protecting, harvesting, and sharing. The garden speaks to you like nothing else can. There are a lot of virtues and values you can get from the garden that transfer to the family and community life. Being present certainly is one of them. You have to listen to the soil, listen to the plants. If you're present in the moment, the plants will tell you what they need and when they need it. Experiencing this, learning this helps with all other human relationships. The time has come to reimagine and reconstruct our cities in a manner that is environmentally sustainable, socially uplifting, and economically viable. Urban farms are creating jobs, educating entrepreneurs and consumers, while elevating agriculture is a viable career choice. I hope these pictures are helping to tell part of the story of uh, building community through ag urban ag. They convey the look and feel of the city of the future. Building community is about more than, 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 than houses or even parks and recreation. Although these things are important, it's also about economic well-being of all of our citizens and growing what we need to sustain ourselves, food. Converting vacant lots into lush farms improves property values and reduces crime. This outcome has been seen around urban farms throughout the country. Soil is a living entity. We should understand that nature will work with us when we work with her. Salvation for our cities is in the soil. What we return to the earth, huh? the earth returns to us. So if you have connected with my ideas, then I urge you to take a real walk through the city. Try and look, look at it differently. We you now see the empty lots of green in the open spaces as an opportunity to create urban oases? Will you imagine fewer sick, fewer homeless, fewer hungry, and fewer unemployed people? Urban agriculture transforms both people and places. It is a powerful catalyst for urban renewal and the revitalization of our communities. Growing food can grow remarkable cities. The city of the future is now, and it's being shaped by urban agriculture and you. Thank you.